Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will cover how to create a full free cash flow model. If you haven't already seen the how to build a theater tab and how to create a debt schedule tab videos, I'd recommend watching those as well since we'll reference them in this video. So to get started, a free cash flow model projects the cash generation of a business and can help us understand a number of things, including how much future cash will be available to service debt, pay shareholder dividends, make share repurchases, or even anticipate any cash shortages, to name just a few. We can divide a free cash flow model into three main segments. One, the income statement, two, the free cash flow build, and three, the debt schedule. Let's start with the income statement. The level of complexity in coming up with financial projections will depend on what you're trying to accomplish. An income statement you might build in investment banking will look different than one you'd build in private equity or one you'd build in corporate finance. You also want to be able to run different cases in your free cash flow model, like a base case, a downside case, a management case, etc. The easiest way to do this is by using a theater tab where you link up your cases and then have one active case that you can toggle using a switch. I'd recommend watching our theater tab video here in case you are unsure how to do this or if you need a refresher. In the income statement part of the model, we'll go from revenue down to net income and use various line items from the income statement like depreciation and amortization and taxes later in the model to calculate our free cash flow. From the top, as a quick refresher, revenue less cost of goods sold gets you to gross profit and then gross profit less operating expenses gets you to EBITDA and then EBITDA less depreciation and amortization and interest takes you to earnings before tax or EBT. From here, you calculate your taxes using a tax rate, and EBT less taxes is your net income. Let's start at the top. Let's go from revenues and link it up to our active revenue from our feeder tab. In this model, we're assuming an EBITDA margins for our projections. This is a simplifying assumption. So we link up our EBITDA projections to our feeder tab just like we did for revenue. Then some companies have something called a stock-based comp, which is essentially a way for corporations to use stock or stock options to reward employees instead of using cash. They are usually not included in operating expenses, but they should be included for tax calculations, which is why we're taking them out here. So once you get to your EBITDA post SPC, take out your DNA to get to EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. So you'd link up your DNA assumptions to your feeder tab and calculate EBIT. Then there is one more step before you can calculate taxes, which is calculating your interest payments. This is normally the very last line you will link up since you need your debt schedule to calculate your interest payments, but you would need your free cash flow bills to feed into your debt schedule. So let's leave this line blank for now and highlight so we remember to come back. We can fill in the tax or calculation formulas now so we can keep going with the model. We just have to remember that the model isn't complete until the interest is linked. In this model, I've included calculations for net operating losses or NOLs, but we've covered that in a separate video which might be helpful if you're interested. For simplicity, let's calculate taxes off of the EBT. So it'll be EBT times our tax rate times negative one. And EBT less taxes is our net income. Let's move into the free cash flow portion of the model. When you're building your free cash flow, keep in mind that net income is not the best representation of real cash generated. For example, capital expenditures are a real cash item that are not captured in net income. But on the other hand, depreciation, which is a non-cash line item, is captured in net income. So that's why we would need to include a separate build to pure free cash flow. There are two main ways to do this. One is going from EBITDA, which you know is a cash line since it's just revenue less cost of goods sold and less operating expenses and taking out any incremental cash flow line items or the second way to do this is to go from net income and add back the non-cash items included in net income like dna and then taking out any incremental cash items i personally prefer the first method so 
So we'll take EBITDA pre-SBC since stock-based comp is not a real cash outflow and subtract out cash interest and cash taxes, which both come from the income statement portion of the model. So we can link it up now. Remember that we still need to calculate interest payments, so this is still pulling a zero for now, but when we update and link up the interest payment at the top, this will automatically update. Then another line is the change in net working capital. Working capital includes current assets and liabilities like inventories, accounts receivable, and accounts payable. Essentially, net working capital is what the business needs to run on a day-to-day -day basis, and this will be something you make assumptions about along with revenue and EBITDA. Remember, we only want to take the change in net working capital for a free cash flow portion. So let's link this up to the feeder tab as well. Next, CapEx is another line item that is a cash outflow which isn't included in our income statement. One way to project out CapEx is to say, historically the company has needed 3-4% of revenue in CapEx to sustain the business, so as the company continues to grow, the same 3-4% of revenue will be needed in CapEx every year. So you would link up this to the feeder tab as well. Now we've got the levered free cash flow of the business. If the company you're looking at is public, you might also have dividend payments or share repurchases. With dividend payments, if a company has historically paid them and all of a sudden stops, it sends a negative signal out to its shareholders. So companies will want to, as much as possible, make sure it hits those dividend payments. So you can include this line item as well in the cash flow. If a company has excess cash, it can also decide to use that cash to repurchase some shares. So this can also be an assumption you have in your free cash flow. Both of these line items you would link up to your feeder tab. Okay, we've made some really good progress, but we still have a little ways to go. So now that you've got your LFCF, your levered free cash flow, after dividends and share repurchases, you can start using those cash flows to pay down debt. The debt schedule can be complex, so we have a separate video on just the debt schedule, which I highly recommend watching. If you're not comfortable with the debt schedule, pause here and watch that video first. We'll link it here. At the bottom of your debt schedule, you'll have a summary of your mandatory payments and your interest payments from all the tranches of debt, which is what you will use to link to your free cash flow. So back at the top here, your mandatory debt payments are not discretionary, so you will need to take them out of your levered free cash flow first. This also allows you to check if you have any anticipated cash, cash shortages. In this example, the company has a billion dollar bond repayment in 2028, which exceeds the cash generated in that year. Thankfully, this company has enough of a cash balance to still be able to cover the payment, which is the next line item. Any excess cash generated in each year that is not used to discretionarily pay down debt is added to the cash balance at the end of each year. We do this calculation below the debt schedule. We start with the beginning cash, which is just ending cash from the previous year. Then we show cash flow after debt pay down, which is this line item, which flows through your debt schedule. And then some companies also mandate a cash floor that they're not allowed to go below. So to calculate actual cash available at the end of the year, you add back the cash floor that you took out initially. So the sum of those two is the cash balance available at the end of the year. You also use this ending cash line item to calculate your interest income. The formula is the average of beginning and ending cash balance times your interest rate. So back here at the top, you link up the cash available at the beginning of the year and take out the minimum cash balance, which is essentially off limits, meaning you can't use that 50 million to pay anything down. So the sum of these tells you the extra cash available for any additional debt payment, which then flows into your debt schedule. The last thing to do now is to link up your interest payments. In your debt schedule, you calculate the interest expense for each tranche of debt and the interest income for your cash balance. I created a summary of this at the bottom along with my mandatory payment summary and include the interest payments for each type of debt here. Remember that you pay interest on debt, but you get interest income from your cash, so the signs are different. When you have the net interest expense at the bottom, you can go back up to the top and link up your interest to this line, which creates a circularity.
And there you have it. You just created a free cash flow model that tells you how much cash you can expect the company to generate. From here, the company can decide what they want to do with their cash generation. For example, if the cash balance continues to grow year after year and the company decides they want to go after a potential M&A target, they can use the cash balance to fund that acquisition. Or on the other hand, if they don't have enough cash generation and they're seeing a lot of cash shortages, they can decide to make cost cuts or other changes to the business to protect against the cash shortages. This can also help a company decide when they want to take on more debt or pay down debt. I hope this video was helpful to you and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments and I will try to answer them. If this video helped you, please like, share, and subscribe.